electrifying day at the Supreme Court. The nine justices wrestling again with the question of same-sex marriage, but this time they were challenged by an 83-year-old woman who brought them her 40-year-old love story. Edith Windsor received a hero's welcome today when she emerged from the Supreme Court saying it's time to take a stand for marriage equality and ABC's Terry Moran was there. Terry. Diane, it's a, it's a classic American story, as you point out. Sometimes the big cases come to the Supreme Court out of conflicts between the states or battles between the branches of government. And sometimes one American walks up these steps seeking justice. That's what happened today. 83 and radiant, Edie Windsor had her day in court, and what a day it was for her. This woman, born in the 1920s, has become a kind of folk hero to countless young Americans in the 20-teens. You guys, I'm talking to you freely. You know, I'd have been hiding in a closet 10 years ago. <laughs> her case arises from the love of her life, Thea Spire. They spent 44 years together in New York City. Edie worked at IBM, Thea was a therapist, and they finally married in 2007. But then after Thea died in 2009, Edie, who lives on a fixed income, was suddenly hit with three $363,000 in estate taxes, taxes no straight widow would pay, because the federal government refused to recognize their marriage under the Defense of Marriage Act, which defines marriage under federal law as the union of one man, one woman, affecting taxes, Social Security, military survivor benefits. Today in court, Justice Ruth Ginsburg said it seemed like a second-class system for gay couples. State, there are two kinds of marriages, the full marriage and then the sort of Skim milk marriage. That comment struck a chord on social media, becoming a popular Twitter hashtag, while this red equal sign became an overnight symbol of solidarity with gay couples. Since President Obama's already said the 1996 law is unconstitutional, House Republican leaders are defending it. Their lawyer telling the court that all Congress was doing was setting one federal standard for marriage. But Justice Elena Kagan challenged that claim reading from the original documents on the bill and suggesting something darker may have been at work. I'm going to quote from the House report here, is that Congress decided to reflect and honor a collective moral judgment and to express moral disapproval of homosexuality. Is that what happened in 1996? But for millions of Americans, same-sex marriage is about bedrock beliefs. We're not motivi motivated by hate. We're not motivated by bigotry. We just believe that when the God of the Bible created the institution, he didn't get our advice on it. He defined it, and I really believe that he got it right. So Edie Windsor had her day in court. She wasn't alone. This today is like a spectacular event for me. Uh, I mean, it's a lifetime kind of event. And, uh, and I know that the spirit of my late spouse, the Aspire, is right here watching and listening and, uh, and would be very proud and happy of where we've come to. Edie was in the front row of the spectator section inside the court. She had some headphones on. She's a little hard of hearing, and you could see her nodding when she thought the case was going her way, shaking her head when she was con concerned and looking just as confused as the rest of us at other times.